Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be sharing some tips, some tricks, and some must-have items to start a furniture flipping business. If you ever wondered what it takes to start, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back with my answers. Yesterday there was sun and there was rain. First off, I just need to say that I personally do not like to refer to this type of work as furniture flipping. Flipping by its own definition does not fit what is happening with this furniture. I prefer to use the term furniture upcycling because that's actually what we're doing. Just my two cents how to get that out there. I recently joined some really great groups. I started sharing my work in these groups and I have to say the response that I got was incredibly humbling to say the least. And I started receiving emails and messages from people all over the world and the question they all seemed to want to know the answer to was how did you start and what did it take? Honestly, it doesn't take much, but you do need some basic items. So I'm going to give you my top 10 categories of must-haves to start your own business. Whether you're doing it for a business or just for yourself, for your own home, these are my must-have categories to start. Number one, brushes. All shapes, all sizes, and all materials. Brushes are made for specific types of paints, and there are so many out there, the choices can be quite overwhelming. To simplify it, my rules for starting out are this, chip brushes. I like small and medium chip brushes and I keep a good inventory on hand. I use them in almost every project and they are absolutely affordable. You can clean them, you can throw them away, it's not a big deal. They're readily available at all the big box stores and an absolute must have regardless of what type of furniture you're doing. Now if you're going to work with chalk paints, that's different brushes altogether. You're going to want to get an oval or a round chalk paintbrush. I suggest having a natural bristle and a synthetic bristle. Also keep in mind that the cheaper the brushes, the more likely the brush is to shed its bristles while you're working, which is extremely frustrating. Trust me, I know. So I think it's better to invest in good brushes as you can afford to. They pay for themselves in the end with the quality finish they provide your projects. You absolutely can get a kit off of Amazon of chalk paint brushes, very affordable. They are going to shed their bristles as you go. You'll have to pick them off, but you can get a whole kit for under $25. Now you're gonna want a flat synthetic brush. My preference is a three inch. I think that's a great size to get into spaces. I love my mini Worcester. I keep them on hand. What I love about them is it has a very small handle and it's flexible, making it perfect to get into those hard to reach tight spots. To start out, just get yourself a good synthetic brush. You're also gonna want small detail brushes just like these. They are all different shapes and sizes. Great little packages are available at the Dollar Tree and these are fabulous to have on hand for those small painting tasks and an absolute must-have if you plan on doing any type of metal leafing. Aren't they pretty? Number two, you're gonna want a mini roller kit. That includes the roller, the pads, and a tray. Mini roller, preferred rolling pads. These are lint-free with a super smooth nap. This is a must-have for solid color upcycles. Using the right products guarantees a perfect finish every time. Number three, tools. Now most people living out on their own have some sort of a toolkit, even if it's a small toolkit. And this kit probably contains items like a hammer, you might have a Phillips head and a regular head driver set, I'm sure you have a tape measure, maybe even a wrench or two. These are all necessary items for removing hardware from furniture. The older the furniture, the funkier the hardware is going to be, meaning you are going to find scenarios that you can't use a regular screwdriver on. You're going to encounter things such as nuts, wing nuts, star tips, and the like. You're gonna also wanna have some WD-40 on hand to loosen up that old rusted on hardware. Now personally, I find that a drill driver set with a kit full of tip options is the way to go. And you can actually get these incredibly affordable and on sale at the big box stores. This with all of these options allows you to be more prepared for the funky kind of hardware you are inevitably going to encounter sooner or later. And, Power saves on your hands, which is great for someone like me with rheumatoid arthritis. Anything I can do to make life easier on my hands, 
I'm gonna do it. You're also gonna need sanders, electric and hand sanding options. I have a box filled with different grit paper, everything from rough to super smooth so that I'm prepared for every project I have and I have the paper to fit on all my different sanders. Now when it comes to sanders, I have my orbital sander, which I absolutely love. I have my little palm mouse sander, as I like to call it. This is fabulous for getting into those corners. And then I have my surf prep. I have sanding silhouettes. Look at all those profiles. You can see all the different shapes right there. These are super helpful for getting those beautiful detailed edges. I got these off of Amazon and they were absolutely affordable. Now I also have hand saws and machine saws and those are items that you're going to find you might potentially need for less than perfect pieces that might need a bit more repairs. I could go on forever about tools, but the last one I'm gonna mention is a multi-tool. Now this particular multi-tool is a 14-in-1 by Rolling Dog. Rolling Dog was kind enough to sponsor my videos. This tool is amazing. You can feel the weight to this. Multi-tools are a must because you're going to find yourself reaching for them for so many different things. They're a scraper. You can clean rollers. You can clean edges and details. It has points to really get into cracks and crevices to clean it out. The end of this one happens to be a hammer. I open my paint cans with this. I do everything with my multi-tool. I love, 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 love this tool. I am absolutely going to put the link down below for you. Highly recommend this tool. Again, I make nothing off of it. Just a quality tool that one artist is passing on to another. Now, depending upon the furniture you find yourself working on as you go, you are going to figure out more tools that you need. Maybe something you're not using so much, but it's an independent individual basis. It just depends on what your level of comfort is with tools. Maybe you're the type that just wants to take pieces that are ready to immediately be painted and turned out the door, no repairs, no nothing. Or maybe you're the type that loves a challenge and wants to really revive something and bring it back from the dead. Whatever the case may be, you will find your own groove of necessities and tools needed and you'll add to them as you go. Four, paints and stains. You're gonna need various paints and stains period. Now this can get super expensive, but here are some ways that you can alleviate that a little bit. Shop the oops section of the big box stores paint section. You can get these samples that will do a couple smaller projects super super cheap can't beat that price now chalk paint is the latest rage but that can get expensive did you know that you can turn any latex paint into chalk paint yes you can super easy just by using calcium bicarbonate calcium bicarbonate is what gives chalk paint its chalky appearance hence the name chalk paint. Now Amazon sells five pound bags at a very affordable price opening up the possibilities for you to transform any latex paint into a chalk paint. And don't be afraid to mix colors and create your own custom colors. You can get some amazing colors by experimenting. My suggestion is when mixing your custom colors, use specific measurements and write everything down. So that way, if you run short and you have to make more, you can mix it up and be sure to get the exact same shade. I have a cheap set of measuring cups I grabbed from the Dollar Tree and I have a kitchen scale for weight measuring. Number five, Bondo wood filler spackle. All must-haves in the world of furniture upcycling, in my opinion. My suggestion is play around with all three, get to know them, and see the differences and benefits each one brings to the project. The best way to learn is to do. I am a firm believer in that. Number six, glue. Various glues do various jobs. My staple go-tos are E6000, the Type Bond brand. This is a wicked good glue. I have several different varieties of the Type Bond brand. And Gorilla Glue, another great glue. Now I just started with a good woodworking glue and as I went, I kind of added them as I need. Each one is great in its own right. Each one brings something fabulous to the table in its own right. Again, Get them as you can, get them when they're on sale, try them out, play with them, and see for yourself. You might find that you actually prefer one over the other. I like keeping a variety so that way I'm not limiting myself. That's just my preference. Number seven, a stain blocking primer. 
Now primer is important for almost every single project you're going to encounter. That can be the difference between your paint staying in place or sliding right off. Also when working with vintage and antique pieces of furniture you are going to find that the good majority of them are made out of cherry and walnut. And even if you sand all the old paint and stain off there is still the likelihood that a red purple color is going to bleed up through the wood and right through your fresh paint. So adding a stain blocking primer such as bins is an absolute must. Number eight rags. Lots and lots of rags. You're going to want them for multiple things like stain and gel application and removal, cleaning your projects, wiping down your brushes, various things like that. I like to have an abundance of lint-free cotton rags available. And I also like microfiber cloths. Now you can get the microfiber cloths right out of the Dollar Tree and while you're there grab yourself a couple pairs of rubber gloves. They save your manicure and keep your hands from getting stained or irritated while you're working on your projects. Cleaners. You're going to need cleaners because your pieces are going to be filthy, dirty, gross. The cleaners I like to keep on hand and use are Dixie Bell's White Lightning. And I actually bought a spray bottle and keep it ready to go all mixed up. Crud Cutter. This is a TSP replacement. You can spray this on your project. It removes the shine. It preps the surface for paint. And you don't have to rinse it. Best part is there's no harsh chemicals. And then we have good old Dawn dishwashing liquid. I like to mix that in a bucket of hot soapy water and really scrub down my pieces. It's extremely important to clean your pieces very thoroughly before you begin any part of the project. It's an absolute must. You cannot skip that step. You have to start there. Number 10. A water mister, otherwise known as an atomizer. These are readily available on Amazon and super affordable and an absolute must-have especially if you're going to be working with chalk paint. Chalk paint tends to dry a bit quickly if you don't move fast enough and you'll need a little mist of water to bring the fluidity back to it and make the paint movable again. But you don't want to soak your surface. It's a fine line of water best left for the water mister and not a sprayer. And one thing I didn't mention but should be on everyone's list is safety glasses. Always have them on hand, always wear them. Proper safety when you're working on any project is an absolute must. Don't endanger yourself in any way, shape, or form. Always go by the book, always take precautions, always be careful, and have fun with it. Personally, I like the yellow ones. They brighten the whole world up and I can see way better with them than I can with the clear. So make sure you have some safety glasses in your kit. So that's just my basic bottom line list of things you're going to find you need to start upcycling furniture, whether for profit or for yourself. You'll amass more as you go and you'll discover more things you need as you advance through this new journey of yours. But that list is going to get you off and running. Now for a few tips, tricks and secrets that help make the job a bit easier. Price tags and stickers can leave a super sticky residue behind on your pieces and the likelihood of finding a price tag or a sticker on used furniture purchased is extremely high. Even after you remove the price tag, the gunk residue is still left behind and there's a few different options you have for getting that gunk off. Good old fashioned Goo Gone, it's a chemical, it works really really good and it will get all of that sticky gross residue off. If you don't want to work with a chemical oil will also work. And by oil I mean olive oil, vegetable oil, avocado oil. That will all lift and remove all the gunky residue left behind from stickers and price tags. But that also leaves behind an oil residue that you have to be meticulous about cleaning off after. If you don't clean it off after, your paint is not going to stick to your project. It's going to slide right off and you're going to get really aggravated. <laughs> For that reason, completely avoid that option. My go-to is alcohol. Sporal alcohol, I keep it in my medicine cabinet, use it with a cotton swab on any surface including wood. It takes the gunk right off. I've not had any damage happen on any of the surfaces I've had to use it on and what I love about it is alcohol evaporates real quickly so there's no drying time. Another great tip to remember when working with antique and vintage furniture is keep a bar of soap with you specifically for your projects. I use this on the rails and slides of drawers that are a little bit sticky. 
sticky. And this helps keep them sliding smoothly. And what I really like is after you rub it all over the rails, it adds a fresh scent to the stuffy enclosure of an antique dresser. But more importantly, it actually works and helps your drawer slide. But I always use soap on all of my vintage pieces. Even if you don't see me use it, I've used it. When it comes to cleaning up old hardware, the absolute hands down best method I personally have ever found is the boiling water with vinegar method. Basically you add some water to a pan, dump in a good amount of vinegar, put your hardware in there, bring it to a boil on the stove, let it boil for 20 minutes. Shut the heat off, let the hardware and that water cool down until you can safely handle it. And then using double yacht steel wool, you wanna gently brush all the years of crud away. And believe me, it slides right off easy. If you're not sure what double yacht steel wool is, that is four zeros. Two zeros is a yacht, hence double yacht. This method has not failed me yet, to be perfectly honest. Now, older pieces can come with funky kinds of smells, such as musky smells, barn smells, smoke smells. Some of these can be really, really tough to get out. One technique that I like to do on these to try to get the smell out is using Mother Nature. I like to use the sun to bleach it out with a little help from some water and some vinegar. I mix up a mixture of 50-50 water and vinegar, put that in a spray bottle, take my piece outside into the sunshine and spray it down really good inside. Now, if you are planning on keeping the finish on your vintage or antique piece, do not spray this on the finish. It can ruin it. If you are going to change the finish up, don't worry about it. You can spray the entire piece. I leave it out in the sun as long as possible, generally an entire day. Let the sun do its work and hopefully the smells are gone. Now, there are some really, really super tough stains that just aren't going to come out out of some of these pieces and for those you're going to have to step it up a bit. There are many 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 different products out there that can block stains and smells. Do some research, tons of options out there. Again, try things. I really encourage you just really get out there and experiment. Now on the furniture art side of this business, the more than just a coat of paint type of a deal where you're getting into transfers and decoupage, stencils and molds, too many things to list. But when you start getting into that, that's considered furniture art because that is way beyond upcycling. It's a form of upcycling, but it's an upcycling of upcycling. You know what I mean? I've amassed a good collection of these items so that when I want to do a project, I'm ready. I don't have specific projects for all of this stuff, but I have all of this stuff for specific projects. So when the creative vibe hits me, I have everything on hand to get a project done. So much better than having to run to the store constantly and pick up supplies. I am a huge proponent of a well-stocked studio. Pick one up here, pick one up there. Even if you don't have anything in mind, if you see something that you'd like, grab it, set it aside. Now, these can really get expensive, but they really do up the game with your total vision. And they turn furniture into statement pieces, focal points, and works of art that command a higher price at resale. And that's a benefit for you. So it's definitely something I encourage you to just explore further, even if it's just research at the moment. Now, Etsy is a really great source. I get a lot from direct specialties such as Annie Sloan, Fusion, Dixie Bell, IOD, Redesigned by Prima. Those are all amazing brands and there are many, many more out there. So again, look for yourself, explore, see what's out there and play around. That's how you get better at your craft. Now, another rule that I try to stick to that truly helps me is I don't limit myself by marrying myself to one particular brand. When you do that, you kind of tend to possibly miss out on something pretty fabulous because lots of different brands have lots of different things to offer. I am a huge proponent of keeping multiple sources on hand. And finally, the absolute best tip that I can actually give you in this entire video is know your area's demand. What is popular in your area? What is selling? Is it nightstands? Is it buffets? Is it tall dressers, short dressers? What do you see for sale in your area? What do you see on Marketplace that goes really quick in your area? Every demographic is different and you don't want to invest your time and money in a piece that's going to become extremely hard for you to unload afterwards. Research one afternoon and take notes. Familiarize yourself with what is selling out there and more importantly, familiarize 
familiarize yourself with what is a good price to pay for something in your area. Because one thing I've learned in my group, items that sell really good in my area, once I upcycle them, I'm getting for free or like $20 on Marketplace. And then other people in my groups getting the exact same items in their locations, they're paying like $100 sometimes for these things. So it's very important to know what is a fair price to pay, what is a fair price to charge, and what's selling. Style, type, aesthetic, the whole shebang. The more knowledge you give yourself, the more power you have for this business, for yourself, for it to be a success. I bought myself this book off of Amazon because as you all know, I kind of just fell into doing this. I wanted to understand the furniture I was bringing in. This book is amazing. This is The Furniture Bible by Christoph Porny. I hope I said that right. And this is an amazing book for someone like me who doesn't have this giant knowledge of wood crafting under my belt. This gives you a rundown of the styles through the ages, how to identify them, what to look for. It also teaches you to identify the different types of wood out there because let me tell you, there are a ton of woods and they all can't do the same or give the same result so again the more empowerment you give yourself with knowledge the better you're going to be at this business all together. Another great resource is joining those Facebook groups that pertain to furniture upcycling and flipping. There's a ton named after that on Facebook. If you just type in furniture flipping in the search bar, all these groups will come up and those are amazing to join because there are some very talented like-minded individuals in there with some serious knowledge and they are always ready to help you if you just ask and they're also there to inspire you with ideas if you get yourself in a rut. So I encourage you to find these groups and join them. Also, my number one rule of thumb in life altogether when it comes to shopping, if you find something on Marketplace or, on, or for sale that you want, grab it. Don't wait, don't go home, don't have the regrets because when you do decide you want it and you go back for it, much like at TJ Maxx, it's not going to be there. Trust me, I know. Most of my furniture comes from donations from friends and family. Facebook Marketplace for me is an amazing resource. I have my antique center that I frequent. I get a lot of stuff from there. And I found some great finds on the curb. Don't snuff your nose to a curbside find. If you see something interesting, pull over and check it out because one person's trash is another person's treasure. And more importantly, don't be afraid to think outside the box with everything that you do. Get creative, dive in, learn, experiment, try new things. What's the worst that can happen? It's only pain after all. Well guys, I hope you found this video informative and useful and maybe you even took a note or two for yourself. But more importantly, I hope this sparked some kind of excitement in you for your new journey. If you found benefit in this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps keep my channel going so I can continue to share my journey with you fabulous people. Hit that subscribe button, turn on my channel notifications so you won't miss anything, and thank you for spending your time with me today. Alright guys, I'll see you on the flip side. Bye!